Hello and welcome to this video and this video is going to be called the 20 greatest jazz fusion tunes of all time by me with my subjective opinion today right so please this is a bit of fun um, it doesn't mean these are the greatest these are my subjective opinion I hope some of them you'll go, yeah, that's got to be in the list. And others you'll go, oh, I wouldn't have put that in the list. So that's half the fun. So please remember that before we start. This video is going to be cut in two parts. So this is part one, where I look at uh, 20 down to 11. And then part two, we'll be looking at 10 down to one. I've given it a subtitle as well, which is going to be called Funky, Brutal and Flying. So that's the sort of stuff that's in this list. There's some incredible jazz fusion tunes that are very mellow, beautiful ballads or they're experimental, you know, or they're very innovative, right? But those are in the list. What we've got here are tracks that are funky or groovy or rocking. In other words, they make you want to move, right? They, they, they have some sort of visceral energy that pushes you, you know, to feel something in here, you know. Um, brutal, right? They're taking your face off. It's not mellow. All this stuff on here is going to be pretty brutal. And that, that was a really important in choosing certain stuff. So I might go, well, that's my favourite track by this group. But the one that just blows you away is this one, and I would go for that one. Okay? And flying. In other words, the people are soloing, they're playing, and they're going for it. All right? That there's some visceral energy in there. Okay? And I hope that, that you can hear that that is in all of these tracks. Right, so let's start with number 20. At number 20, I cannot hold something up because the copy I have is, is digital because this is a new tune, right? Unlike my top um, fusion albums of all time, I've actually picked a few, not many, but a few tunes that actually aren't from the 1970s. It's quite a shock. And this is the most recent one on the list, I think. Um, I think pretty sure it is. This is Overtime by Noah. Noah is the group led by Genevieve Tardy and Louis Cole. All right. This to me has all the great um, attributes of jazz fusion, but it's kicking it into the future. Uh, I don't know what it is about Louis Cor Cor uh, Louis, Cor uh, Louis, uh, Louis Cole, um, but he just seems to have a take on fusion, which is just highly creative, innovative and futuristic. Um, when I watched the video, and I was talking specifically really about the um, version that was recorded in like, it looks like someone's flat, the famous video that's had millions of views. Um, I like that recording. I like the fact that it was done live. Some of the actual Noah albums are a little bit processed and programmed for me. But when they play live, it's something else. And you can hear the visceral energy. You can hear a band in the room playing and finding that groove and playing together. That's so rare on so many fusion albums in the 80s and the 90s when they all started overdubbing in. And a lot of modern fusion albums where they're now doing it, you know, over the internet. I think of Liberation Time, John McGoughlin's new album. But here we hear people in the same room playing, right, and they're going for it. It's fusion, in the, it's, it's, it's definitely a fusion between rock or funk or dance music or even jungle drum and bass and jazz. But it's almost like a fusion between pop music and jazz. The melodies in the chorus are so catchy. Genevieve's vocals are so fantastic. She's a highly skilled jazz singer, you can tell that. But her, her, her lyrics are catchy, they understand the hook. But when they get to the solos, my God, do they solo. And the way they solo is in a way which is not just someone showing off their Berkeley chops. And it's not someone just sitting, sounding like George Duke, you know, but 40, 50 years later. They're playing in a way which is really modern. And I think that's why I'm going to give them the props. Um, in a few years' time, it could be well be the case that um, I, I rate this much higher. Right, let's move on to number 90. So at number 90, I've got another relatively new band, although a little bit older than this, and this would be Lingus by Snarky Puppy off the album. I think it's called We Like It Here. I haven't got the album. I'm just a digital download of this track. I've had a bit of a knock of Snarky Puppy on another video. Right, they're fantastic players, and to give them their credit, this is the track that creates this new genre of people playing jazz fusion in a room with high production values, with all the trendy people on with the headphones, and they're all nodding and they're loving it. Well, that's a fantastic idea. Here, I really feel there's something real about this. Corey Henry's solo is absolutely fantastic. 
it seems to be a moment that they're capturing that's happening right there and then. Um, whether Corey Henry is coming in playing rehearsed licks and he knows what he's going to do and you've got it all mapped out which often seems to be the case with a lot of modern fusion you go here's all the licks I, I rehearsed earlier but there's something about it you know that seems to be um, something happening in the moment I think some of the reactions of the other musicians and people in the audience is real too and uh, now that's become a bit of a cliche. It's like, you know, when people watch X Factor and somebody just starts singing in tune and everyone claps, oh my God, they're singing in tune, you know. Um, but uh, you get that a lot now, you know, somebody starts just soloing, playing a funky groove, you know, on one of these sort of in-session videos and everyone's like going, oh, they're almost like passing out because it's so amazing. But here I think Corey Henry really does something which no one had seen before at that time and it was really playing, you know, and he really takes it out. So yeah, that's what I've got number 19, right? Number 18, I have another album which I own digitally. I did have it on CD a few years ago and I lost it. Um, as time has gone on, I think this album and this track particularly really sums up a way of playing which I think Noah are actually coming out of. The track is by um, Wayne Krantz and it's called Afcap and it's off the album. Three drink minimum, two drink minimum, you'll tell me in the comments some number of drinks minimum. I love this album. It was quite a shock when it came out. It was obviously a trio in a bar somewhere with one stereo microphone and maybe a mini disc recorder back then stuck in a room just recording what they were playing. But Wayne Krantz is, is, is rewriting the book in terms of improvisation. Because he had not got the budgets to go in the studio I think and rehearse He's almost created a new way of improvising, and I found this profoundly interesting, right? Um, and I've tried to work out what he's doing. It's as though it's, it's, it's based around groove. Uh, it's based, based around sort of intervals and short phrases that are repeated that people can lock onto with cues. It's really, really interesting. But it's also absolutely flying. I think the drummer on this is Zach Danzinger, um, but he's also used Keith Carlock and they're, they're grooving in a new way that has influenced me immensely. So that's what I've got at number, um, where are we at? The 2018. Okay, so we're now moving on to 17. And I actually have something I can hold up now. So at number 17, we have from this album, Land of the Midnight Sun. We have Sweet Golden Dawn, right? So when I put this list together, I thought, right, Race with the Devil on Spanish Highway, that's got to go on the list. But I've, I did um, top 10 on Sea of Tranquility, and, uh, and in, in doing that and going through them, I realised that my favourite track by Aldi Miola is that one. And I think it's because his sound is so brutal, the, the track is so epic, you know, it's a good 10 minutes long, and it's got Jaco Pastorius on, and Jaco has to be on this list, and he's, he's on... This is the only time he's on, I think, on this list, and we have to have Jacko in there somewhere. Um, and, he's, and he's flying on it as well. So that's what I've got at number um, 17. If you want to hear me talk about that more, go over to Sea of Tranquility and check out our you know, top 10 Aldemiola albums, because I'm going to get a move on through this, right? So what have I got at number 16? Okay. Um, I don't get to cover this guy enough on this channel and I think it, 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 it's really important that we keep giving him the credit that he's due for being a true, true jazz rock fusion pioneer and one of the great guitarists and it is this guy Larry Coriel, it's the 11th house. Uh, my gut feeling was to go for introducing the 11th house, everyone knows that that's a classic fusion album, it's one of his greatest albums and god it is a brutal funky flying album but this one is also fantastic and this is my preferred album. There's a track on the end of Side 2 called Nyctophobia and it is absolutely brutal jazz fusion. If you like the stuff to take your face off, go and check it out. And check out Larry's solo on it. He's absolutely flying. His phrasing's incredible. He really does not get the credit he should. In so often, I find his, his, his playing as interesting, if, if not more interesting than John McGoughlin because... He's coming out of the same, he's almost like the American John McGoughlin. You know, my computer just switched off and I cannot do this without my list, I need my list. Um, he's almost like the American uh, John McGoughlin. 
And he's got the same set of influences, but from an American standpoint, and it's really interesting how close they are, but how different they are, and the way they, they both access alternate picking to get what they do, you know, across. You know, so, yeah, that is Nyctophobia. Go and check it out. So, um, what have we got next? Right. I felt I had to represent the ECM world on this list, because ECM is that European fusion thing as well as bands like Passport, and I haven't covered that enough on this channel. But I thought I needed to represent this in the list, and I thought, I really want to represent that sort of chamber jazz sound, and yet find a very fusion-y flying track, and that's quite difficult, but one just spring to mind straight off. And it's Spiral Dance, off this album belonging. Um, Spiral Dance really kicks, you know. Four minutes of just pure jazz fusion joy, Jan Garbrick is such a signature sound on saxophone, and of course the great Keith Jarrett, absolutely incredible. This is also one of the greatest albums ever made, in my opinion, one of the greatest ECM albums ever made. If I had to have just one ECM album to represent all that, it could well be this. Keith Jarrett, God, is just an absolute titan of music. Okay, so where are we at now? So I think we've done one, two, three, four, five, six. We've, we've done six albums in, so we should be at number 14 now. So I should be around about halfway, which I am, because I don't want to. Sometimes on these videos, I talk too much and then I have to rush, and I'm trying not to do that. But obviously, me doing this little interlude of explaining that to you is actually taking time of getting up to the next album, which is at number 14, I hope. I do go out of sequence. So I'm going to have to read the track title out on here. Um, because it's got such a funny name. Yeah, that's it, of course, it's got, it's got a funny name, it's obvious, right. So, um, off this album, there we are, one of the greatest covers in jazz fusion. Off this album, Miles Davis, Sivad, okay. It was on the list, if I look at my list over there, it was what I'd say. Now, what I'd say is probably the most brutal and um, in your face, so... I'm sort of giving you a seek. It could be what I say, but I think at the last minute I, I thought, I'm now I'm going to go for Sivad. Um, uh, Sivad Stroke Little Church Medley, right? When I bought this album, I was a massive Miles Davis fan at this point, and I was into Bitches Brew, I'd got Jack Johnson, but when I put this one on and that track kicked in with that sort of incredible groove and that incredible sound that sounds like a really funky donkey, yeah, and it, then the whole kick thing kicks in and then Miles just tears in and Miles just takes it and kicks it so far up the bum it just flies out the window. It's just something else. This is, this is Miles, it's, it's, it is really, really, look at the cover, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like this. Right, this is what that sounds like. It's, this is the, the vinyl. I bought this in Berlin, I had to get it. It's a Columbia American release, couldn't get it in the UK. So this is the American version. You can see the sticker there where they put CBS on. Um, and if, you, if I pull it out, that's the, that was the label. I peeled those off so I could have the original Columbia. This is how much I was into mine. There's the original Columbia there. Right. Um, this is the Keith Jarrett band. They brought in John McGoughlin. Keith Jarrett felt that John McGoughlin really upset the apple cart. And he does. If you listen to the other stuff around, the, the, the band's sound is much more ho homogenised. But John McGoughlin seems to come in like a rocket and do something to this. And some of the solos he does on this album. But I'm going for Sivad as being the track. Right, so net, we are should be at number 13. Right, so. Talked about this a few days ago. When I um, talked about the uh, greatest fusion albums of all time. Headhunters, the track Sly, right? They are blowing on that track. God, is it funky. God, is it brutal and fly. And they really go for it. And it sounds like it's as light as air. You know, um, this band is Harvey Mason on drums. Drum, just one of the funkiest drummers ever. Um, and, and, and I didn't mention this. I'm going to talk about all the stuff I didn't mention on the other video about this. God, the great... Incredible Paul Jackson on bass, possibly my favourite bass player. So funky, but able to come at the funk with bass lines that are so left field. They're so not what you would expect someone to do in that situation. right? He, sometimes his bass, he allows other things to occupy the bass range. And his bass lines will sound much more like sort of African percussion or a vocal part. 
He was truly incredible. Harvey Mason, truly incredible. Bernie Maupin, one of the, fa you know, I mean, you listen to that bass clarinet sound, and that's a signature sound of jazz fusion that was, is, is just, you know, when Marcus Miller does it, you just know, like on 2-2, you hear that sound, and you know what that sound is, and that's a signature sound of, of fusion. But on Sly, God, they're really going for it. So there we go. We're going to have to get a move on because I've got five minutes on this video. I want to keep it to 20 minutes, you see. So um, we are pretty much where we're at now. I'm going to just count. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we, we've got two more to go and uh, I've got five minutes to talk about them. So the next one at number 12 is, and I haven't got an album here to hold up and I'll tell you what, is The Nag by John Schofield of the album Blue Matter. I think that Blue Matter is one of the most important albums of the 1980s, right? So when I said there was nothing from the 1980s, I was wrong, see? I don't know what I'm doing, okay? Because <laughs> this is obviously from the 1980s, and so I'm pleased with myself that I've been able to represent the whole eras of, of uh, fusion. I know you're saying there's nothing from the 90s, but there's stuff coming up from the 90s. Um, I have never owned a copy of this album, and yet I will say it's one of the most important albums to me personally. And I'll tell you why, because when I was young, I had the Dennis Chambers tuition video, and uh, that was very important to my development as a player. And on there was the Dennis Chambers Schofield, Gary Granger band, and they played all the stuff off Blue Matter, and they had a CD. So that is where, and I haven't got that, I can't find that CD, I would have loved to hold that, hold that up. Um, I I know the album really really well, and because that I actually had charts, I would I would listen to those tracks, and really I know them inside out. I know all the kicks. Um, the nag is the one track where they really really go for it. It's just absolutely, you know, out of the uh, starting off the starting blocks. You know, brutal jazz fusion. Um, all that eighties influences are there, but for some reason Schofield was just so good. At negotiating that, absolutely incredible. Um, it's worth mentioning some of the live, I think, I think Pickett's live, um, I think there's a version on there. Um, I didn't have that album either, I had a, I had a video of, of Schofield at an open air gig and he does it on that as well. So mm, <laughs> these tracks influence me but not directly from that album. Uh, but the album version I know very well, and it's 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 good enough. If they do it all on the album, it's it's good enough to get in my top twenty. So that's what we've got. So we're now at the the last one. We've got uh, at number eleven. I have of this album by Return to Forever. I've got uh, Captain Senior Mouse. Okay, so. My instinct was to go for a track off Romantic Warrior. Obviously, we have to have a Return to Forever on the list. And I, and I thought Jewel of Chester, Jester of the Tyrant. Um, but um, in terms of just pure in-your-face jazz fusion, I don't think they ever surpassed Captain Senior Mouse, which is eight minutes. And it's because of Bill Connors, right? Bill Connors put to rocket up uh, Return to Forever's bottom that just blasted them into the stratosphere. Aldi Miola was a much more considered player. He's, he's, he, he, there's a brutalness there, without a doubt, because of just the sheer speed and, and, the, and the sort of confidence with which he picks the next. But, but Bill Connors sounds out of control, right? He sounds out of control in the way John McGoughlin does in the Mavish Orchestra. And that puts a real special slant on this album. It also, it's, it's also on Stanley Clark's self-titled album as well. And, the, and I nearly thought, well, shall I just go for a track off that? But really thinking about it, I decided to go for Captain Senior Mouse off this. That incredible loping groove and the way the guitar just kicks in and then the stops and those little ornate sort of almost like modern classical runs that they do. And the Spanish influence that goes all the way through it, um, which Chick can do that in a way which you think, well, this sounds Spanish, but not like the anything Spanish I can think of, you know. So there we go. I am at, I am at, have done my um, list from 20 down to 11, right? I think we've got some classics in there. Obviously, we're going to have some serious classics on the next video, which there should be a link here. Where would it be? You know, it's, it's going to be, oh God. There, see, I'm going to hold my finger there now and it will show you how clever I am because now appearing here is the next video for you to watch. 
I hope that's working. I'm going to keep talking until it, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much. Bye.